Hi, my name is Kate Cohen Posey, and I'm here to introduce you to the Handy Brain model. This is a really low tech item that can teach people how to increase their emotional intelligence or EQ. EQ is the ability to manage your own and other people's emotions. But before we get into those techniques, a few brain basics. Neuroscientists hold two fists together like this to show the general shape of the brain. But if you cross your fists like this, you'll get a better idea of the layout of the brain with the frontal lobes here on your fingers and the temporal lobe on the side. The handy brain model builds on this idea by using a mitten that shows the brain cortex on the back and the temporal lobes on the side. And on the palm of the mitten, it shows the subcortex, that mysterious part of your brain where you have emotions and feelings and sensations. I do want to say that the hand model of the brain was, has been popularized by Daniel Siegel, and he uses just his hand to show how the brain is set up with the cortex here and the temporal lobe here. The handy brain model builds on this idea and can show a lot more detail. The most important area of the brain cortex you need to know about is the frontal lobes right here where you do your forethinking. The limbic system is shown from the knuckle of the thumb down and on the palm side of the thumb. In the limbic system, you have emotional centers that energize the cortex. So you have the amygdala, that is the brain's fear and anger center, and you also have a nucleus accumbens. This is the brain's center for pleasure. These centers and other parts of the subcortex are like the battery in a car. They energize the cortex but you still need your cortex to keep those emotional centers from flooding. Now we're ready for a few techniques to actually manage our emotions. The first thing you need to know about is how to use the cingulated gyrus. This is on the very bottom layer of the frontal lobes and it wraps around the limbic system like a band. Cingulate actually means band. When you activate the cingulate, you turn off the amygdala. And do you know how you activate the cingulate? Simply by thinking deliberately. So I'm here with Nitsa, and Nitsa, I would like you to count backwards from a hundred by threes. Okay, um, 97. Mm -hmm. 94, mm -hmm. 91, mm -hmm. 87, I hope I said that right. <laughs> I, I think again, I think you were at 91. 91, um, 88? 88. 88, now, that's right. You all could not see Nitsa, but while he's moving his eyes like this, you can tell he's thinking, and he's way up in his Singulated gyrus, and he's shutting down. If he was anxious, he would be shutting down his amygdala. But you don't have to do math to activate the cingulate. All you need to do is ask yourself questions. So, Nitsa, if you make a mistake or you're not up to your standards, what question could you ask yourself? Um, is like how important is this to me? How important is this? And then if you want to put in a pinch of math with it, you could say, how important is this on a scale of zero to 10? Mm -hmm. And then you're really going to get yourself up in your cingulate and you're going to shut down the amygdala. Okay. I imagined a zero to a hundred in my case. <laughs> well, zero to a hundred, and is I that know okay? a mistake happened today. How bad was it? Uh, it was. It was probably ten. Perfect. It was a ten. In yes. fact, it might actually help things go better. You never yeah. know. You're not the authority.
So again, the cingulate turns off emotions, but you don't have to turn off your emotions to manage them. Mm. There's another wonderful area of the brain, and even a lot of neuropsychologists, well, I shouldn't say that, a lot of people have never heard of it. It's called the insula, and it's buried right here, deep inside the temporal lobes like that. The way you activate the insula is you just pay attention to your body sensations. So Nitsa, when you're feeling angry, where do you tend to feel that in your body? Um, in my chest, in my stomach area? In your gut, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anger's in your gut and you might also feel it in your arms. Mm -hmm. And when you're feeling sad, do you notice where you feel that? It's in my head, it feels like, and then my heart and my chest. And then goes to your heart and your chest. So amazingly, just by paying attention to those body sensations, they, tend, they come back to normal. It's called back to homeostasis. When you no longer need that feeling, it comes back to normal. So the second way of managing emotions is just to pay attention to them. Attention takes away tension. The motto of the insula is to get out of your head and away from your thoughts and come to your senses or sensations. Or we could say, you just need to find it to rewind it. The third way of managing emotions is very deep. It's a bottom-up approach and it's in your brainstem. You have four rest and connect or parasympathetic nerves in your brain stem and the most important one is the vagus nerve which is right here way down here in the medulla the vagus nerve wanders all through your body like a vagabond and you know how you activate that yeah. just by breathing now when you don't pay attention to your breathing most people breathe about 21 to 25 times a minute. Just by paying attention to your breath, it will slow down. Have people ever told you to slow down your breathing? Yes. Okay, you don't actually have to do that. Again, all you have to do is pay attention to your breath. When you do that, your exhales become longer. And those longer exhales activate this vagus nerve and then the vagus nerve releases an amazing neurochemical called acetylcholine. Acetylcholine, it builds new brain cells right in the dead center front of your brain. So your brain center, your brain frontal cortex can actually thicken through your lifespan if you spend a lot of time paying attention to your exhales. The acetylcholine also boosts your immune system and it reduces inflammation. And then, third thing it does is it turns on the other three parasympathetic rest and connect nerves in your brain stem. So, it can turn on the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is the throat, mouth, or throat, tongue nerve. And you can activate that nerve simply by salivating, which I cannot do now because my mouth is dry. You can activate it by humming. You can activate it by gargling. And you can also activate it by burbling, like you would on a baby's tummy, moving your lips. Another parasympathetic or rest and connect nerve in this brain stem is the ocular motor nerve, which means the eye movement nerve. And you can activate that by moving your eyes back and forth, just like that. Now there's a kind of therapy that has people move their eyes back and forth about 20 times, take a breath, notice what they notice. And after doing a few sets of these eye movements, if they feel like they've taken Xanax, your whole body just becomes relaxed. It's amazing how that ocular motor nerve works. And this is a therapy for trauma. Now, an optometrist discovered that if you look close 
at a finger and then far away, close. Far away, inhale, close, exhale. And it's a, do you notice how my eyes are moving? Yes. Okay, how are they moving, tell me? They're moving back and forth. Yeah, kind yeah. of, they converge mm -hmm. and diverge. It's called the convergence exercise, and it's one of the best things to do if you're having a panic attack. Finally, the last parasympathetic nerve in your brain stem is the intermediate facial nerve. And you can activate that just with a big smile. And when you have a big smile, you might also activate other people's parasympathetic nerves. We'll get into that next time when we talk about managing other people's emotions. If you are a psychiatrist, a counselor, an educator, or a parent, the instructions that accompany the Handy Brain model will give you even more information so you can help those in your charge learn how to manage their emotions and become the boss of their brain. You can find the Handy Brain Model at thehandybrainmodel.com and you will be able to order it online in a few weeks. It will also be on Amazon. Thank you.